Hi, today I am going to say about polynomials. So a polynomial is basically the sum of powers of one or more variable. Here is a given polynomial of one variable which is x. Now the degree of a polynomial is the highest power of x in the polynomial. In this case the degree of the polynomial is n. Now I will state two basic th theorems related to polynomials. Now suppose Px, a polynomial, is divided by another polynomial x minus h. The remainder would be Ph or the value of the polynomial Px when x is substitu substituted by h. Now the root of a polynomial is the value of x for which the value of the polynomial Px is 0. The factor theorem states that x minus h is, is a, can be a factor of Px if and only if Ph equals to 0 or h is a factor root of the given polynomial Px. Sum and product of roots. In the given cubic polynomial ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d, uh, suppose this has roots pqr. We, have, uh, we see that the sum of the roots taken one at a time is negative of the second highest coefficient uh, coefficient of the second highest power of x by the coefficient of the highest power which in this case is minus b by a. The sum of the roots taken two at a time is coefficient of the third highest power by the coefficient of the highest power which is c by a. The product of the roots in cubic equations is the constant term negative of the constant term by the highest coefficient of the highest power which is minus d by a in this case. This is applicable for any polynomial of n degree. Oh ho! Oh. Hi, today I am going to speak about polynomials. A polynomial is basically a, the sum of powers of one or more variables. Here is a given polynomial of one variable. The degree of a polynomial is the highest power of the given variable. So, so the degree of the polynomial in this polynomial is n. The root of a polynomial is the value of x for which the value of the polynomial would be 0. Now I will state two basic theorems on polynomials. Suppose px is divided by another polynomial x minus h. The remainder would be ph or the value of the polynomial px when x is re replaced by h. Factor theorem. x minus h is a factor of px if and only if ph equals to 0 or h be the root of the given polynomial. Sum and product of roots. In a cubic equation, uh, suppose the roots are pq and r. So the sum of the roots is the negative of the coefficient of x square by the coefficient of x cube which is minus b by a. Some of the roots taken two at a time or pq plus qr plus rp would be c by a while the product of the roots would be minus d by a. This is applicable for any polynomial of n degree. The, the, uh, it has negative sign on every alternate values of the sums starting from the first. Now let's try two problems. The first one. You have to solve this given equation when it is told that the product of the two roots is, is the product of the other two. Now we know that minus of minus 40 by 3 is the sum of the roots or a plus b plus c plus d. 130 by 3 is sum of the roots taken two at a time. Minus of minus 120 by 3 is sum of the roots taken three at a time while the product of the roots is 27 by 3. Now as we know that AB equals to CD, we can say that AB equals to CD equals to 3. Now we have this given equations A plus B plus C plus D is 40 by 3, while 130 by 3 is A plus B into C plus D plus AB plus CD. Now we know that AB and CD are 3, so replacing AB and CD by 3, we get A, A plus B into C plus D as 112 by 3. Now taking a plus b as k and c plus d as l, we see that from the first equation k plus l is 40 by 3 and from the second equation kl is 112 by 3. 
Solving the equations, we get k is equal to 4 and l is 28 by 3. Now again, k as k is a plus b and a b is 3, we get that a plus b equals to 4 and a b is 3. Solving them, we get a is 1 and b equals to 3. Similarly, we can solve for c and d, getting c as 1 third and d as 9. Thus, we get the 4 roots of our given equation. Now, let's move on to the second problem. Let a, b and c be the roots of the given equation. Then we have to prove that the sum of the fifth powers of the root by 5 equals to the sum of the sec third power or the cube of the roots by 3 plus the square of the roots by 2. Now since a, b and c are the roots of the equation, substituting x by a would give the value of this equation to be 0. Substituting x by a, b and c respectively, we get this given uh, 3 equations. Now adding these equations we get sigma a cube plus p sigma a plus 3r equals to 0. Now we know that sigma a or sum of the roots is equal to the negative of the coefficient of x square by the coefficient of x cube. We see that the coefficient of x square is 0 in this e given equation. Therefore we conclude that sigma a or sum of the roots is 0. Therefore we get that sigma a cube equals to minus 3r. Now we know that sigma a square equals to sigma a whole square minus 2 sigma a b which is a square plus b square plus c square is a plus b plus c whole square minus 2 a b minus 2 b c minus 2 c a. Now we know that sigma a or sum of the roots is 0 while sigma a b or sum of the roots taken 2 at a time is p by 1 which is p. Now minus 2 sigma a b is minus 2 p. Therefore the value of the sum of the squares of the roots is minus 2 p. Now multiplying the given equation by x square, we get x to the power 5 plus px cube plus 3x square is 0. Substituting x by a, b and c respectively and adding them, we get sigma a to the power 5 plus p sigma a cube plus r sigma a square equals to 0. Now we know that sigma a cube is minus 3r while sigma a square is minus 2p. Substituting them, we get the value of sigma a to the power 5 as pr. Now we see that 1 fifth of 5 pr equals to 1 third of minus 3r into half of minus 2p. Substituting 5 pr by sigma a to the power 5 and minus 3r by sigma a cube and minus 2p by sigma a square, we get our given expression. That is 1 fifth of sigma a to the power 5 equals to 1 third of sigma a cube plus half of sigma a square. Thank you.